Hello boys and girls, welcome back to our story time. So, I'm gonna introduce my friends who are with us for story time today. Azatbek. Hi, hello. Suleiman. Hi, hello. Shahina. Hello. Maryam Khan. Hello. Abdulaziz. Hi. Imama Khan. Hello. Bekzat. Okay, are you ready for today's story time? Yes. yes! Do you know what's our story today? No. no! Before we start our story, we are using a few songs to warm up, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can choose one of those songs. Want to buckle my shoe? Yes. Want to buckle my shoe? Uh -huh. Want to buckle my shoe? One, two, buckle my shoe. Okay, so we are singing one, two, buckle my shoe. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, knock on the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, play them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hand. Good job, everybody. Okay, so today's story called Beauty and the Beast. Let's start our story. We'll find out what's the story about. Okay, long ago there lived a rich merchant who had three sons and three daughters. Unfortunately, his sons were only interested in hunting and fishing, while his two eldest daughters were greedy and selfish. Uh-oh, girls were so greedy and selfish. Are you selfish, children? No. I hope no. Are you greedy, children? No. Only his youngest daughter liked by everyone. Everyone called her beauty. Not only was she very beautiful to look at, she but was the kindest person that anyone had ever met. Are you kind? Yes. Are you nice? Yes. I hope so. One day the merchant heard some terrible news. All the ships carrying his goods had sunk at sea in a storm which left him with hardly any money. Uh-oh, poor man. His all of the goods were sunk in the sea. The whole family had to move from their grand house to a little cottage. While the merchant and his sons worked hard all day in the fields, his daughter stayed at home doing his the all day housework. Do you help to do some housework to your moms? Yes. yes. What do you do, for example, Imam Khan? How do you help? You clean up your room. The two eldest daughters were very lazy and sat around doing nothing. Beauty, however, enjoyed her work around the cottage, happy to be helping her father in these difficult times. Do you think these uh, eldest daughters, uh, the girls, are nice? Uh, yes, eh, no. No. Why? Why are they not nice? Because they only sit and do nothing. They are so lazy girls, right? Yeah, and they eat and sleep, they eat and sleep. And in my imaginations, I think they are very fat and ugly. We'll see. One morning, a letter arrived for the merchant. It said that one of his ships had not sunk and it was going to arrive at the port the following morning. Wow, such a great news. Maybe we are not so poor after all, said the merchant happily. With great excitement, he set off to meet his ship. Before he left, he asked his daughters what they would like as a gift. What would you like as a gift? Uh, I would ask for a Galactic Goose Shooter. Yes, Mama Khan? Uh, I would like if they give money so they could be rich. You would like to give money to poor people? 
great. You are so nice. How about you? I would like a magical ruby ring. Great. The eldest daughters asked for jewels and beautiful clothes, but Beauty, who didn't have a greedy bone in her body, simply asked for a single red rose. She asked just a single red rose. When the merchant got to the port, he found out that there had been a terrible mistake. There was no ship coming into port, which means that he was just as poor as before. Poor merchant. He was so excited and happy. Now he found out there is no any. The unhappy man turned his horse around and set off for home again. Later that night, there was a huge storm. Thunder and lightning filled the sky. And the poor merchant lost his way in the darkness. He was soon soaked to the skin and his horse was getting very tired. At last, he saw lights in the distance. Getting closer, he realized that the lights shone from a castle. Poor man, he got lost in the way. Now he found what? A big castle. He rode up to the castle and knocked on the door. It creaked open. Inside, he found a roaring fire and food on the table, but only one plate. Uh-oh. It looks spooky castle, right? Look at this castle. Maybe a ghost lives in. A huge Whoa. table, but there is only one plate. Yes, Imam Or maybe there is the decent Maybe. There was no one else around. So he sat down and ate. After he would eaten, he went outside and discovered a stable in the courtyard. It was bright and warm with lots of hay for his horse to eat and clean straw for it to sleep on. Back in the castle, he ventured upstairs. One of the bedrooms was warm, with freshly ironed sheets laid out on the bed. Do you think he is doing a good thing? No. Is it good to go to someone's room without the permission? No. Even not just the house. It's almost as if I was expected, thought the merchant, before climbing into bed and falling fast asleep. Now he falls fast asleep. What do you think what's going to happen next? Who is here? The beast. When he awoke the next morning, he got dressed and went downstairs. Again, breakfast was neatly laid out on the table. Again, nobody else was around. After he would eaten, he saddled his horse. Riding out of the long drive, he noticed a rose bush with a beautiful red flowers. At least I can give Beauty the present she asked for he thought, and plucked a single red rose from the bush. Let's see, I'm really getting interested what might happen, because he is still in the castle. From out of the bush, an ugly looking beast appeared in front of him. You eat my food, sleep in my guest room, and now you want to steal one of my rose. You shall die for this. Oh, poor man. What do you think? Can he escape? No. Beasts are so strong and very scary, right? Let's see. The terrified merchant stuttered back, but I didn't see anyone to thank. And I was only taking this one rose for my beauty. Who is this beauty? demanded the beast. She is my daughter, replied the merchant. The beast thought for a moment. Very well then, he said. 
You may leave here on the condition that your daughter Beauty takes your place and comes to me here. The merchant was so scared, he hastily agreed and rode out of the castle grounds as quickly as possible. Uh-oh, such your ultimate of beasts, right? He is asking for his daughter. Let's see what will happen next. When he arrived home, he told his family what had happened. I can't possibly let you go, he told Beauty through his tears. The beast might kill you. You have to, father, said Beauty calmly. If you don't go, he might take revenge on our family. Sadly, the merchant agreed that he had to let Beauty go. With a heavy heart, he waved her farewell as she set out for the beast's castle. Beauty is so honest and she's taking care of her family, but she might be in danger, right? But she's being so kind to her family. When she got there, she found to her great surprise that the beast was very kind to her. He showed her around the castle and its beautiful grounds and then took her to her room. The beast had made sure that all the books she would like to read and all the little ornaments she would like to look at were there. Beast is being so kind. Do you still think Beast is nice here? Yes. He's being nice so far, right? Mm -hmm. There was even a magic mirror in which she could see her family back at home. The scene lasted a few seconds before it faded away. This beast may be ugly, but he is very considerate, thought Beauty. On that first evening, the beast came to eat supper with her. After the meal, he asked her to marry him. I'm sorry, but I can't marry you, she replied. The beast sighed and then slowly walked out of the room. From then on, it was the same every evening. Beauty and the beast would have supper together, and then he would ask her to marry him. Beauty always gave the same reply. What was her reply? Sorry, I can't marry you. I'm sorry, I can't marry you. Time passed, then one evening, Beauty looked into the mirror and saw that her father was very ill. She begged the beast to allow her to go home and care for him. Very well, said the beast, but you must return here within a week. When you are ready to come back, put this ring on your dressing table at home and I shall know you want to return here. If you don't do this within one week, I shall die. Beauty agreed and when she woke up the next morning, she found herself in her own bed at home. She cared for her father day and night over the next few days and soon one week had passed. Although her father was getting better, Beauty had been so busy, she didn't notice how quickly the days had passed. To make matters worse, her older sisters, who had always been jealous of her, didn't tell her. They were secretly hoping that the longer she stayed at home, the angrier the beast would become. He might even kill her. They chuckled to themselves. One night, Beauty had a dream that the beast was lying dead by the side of the lake in his castle grounds. I must go back to him, she thought. She put the ring he gave her on her dressing table and the next morning found herself back in his castle. She ran down the lake and was horrified to see that the beast was lying on the ground barely alive. Uh oh, poor beast. He seems very ill, right? 
He can't move. Let's see what happened to Beast. Oh, Beast, she cried. I didn't mean to stay away so long. Please come back to me. You are so good and kind. Then she kissed him. Suddenly, the beast changed right in front of her eyes. All signs of his ugliness had disappeared and there was a handsome prince in his place. Beauty, my love, explained the prince. I had a spell I cast on my many years ago that turned me into an ugly beast. The only way it could be broken was if a girl who loved me kissed me in spite of my ugliness. Beauty kissed him again and told that she would stay by his side forever. Oh, such a nice poor beast was under a magic for so long time, right? Yes. He couldn't even explain. The happy couple rode to her father's house where they were married. Then they journeyed back to the castle where they lived in complete happens for many years to come. Such a lovely ending. Such a nice ending. Such a happy ending. How did you like? Did you like the story? I didn't like it. I loved it. <laughs> How about you, Maria Khan? Did you like the story? Yes. Good. How I... about you, Imam Khan? Did you like? Okay, which part was your favorite? Okay, yes, Imam Khan. The ending. Yeah. It was happy ending. I like this part too. How about you, Mariam Khan? Which part was your favorite part? I tried to read. Ah, it's the story you would like to read together, right? How about you, Shekina? Which part was your favorite part? Mm, actually, I like the whole story. All right. Now it's time to say goodbye. And I see some people are already sleepy. You seem tired. And some people before, are sleeping. Before we go to bed, what do we say to our parents? We say good night, have nice dreams. Let's say bye bye to our friends who are watching us. And we hope to see you again very soon on our story time. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.